What is up guys, Delboy here. A quick prediction for Sean Porter versus Danny Garcia. This is a welterweight battle that takes place on the 8th of September and it is going to be for the vacant WBC welterweight title. A tremendous fight in my opinion, one I am very much looking forward to. I think it's going to be a really good clash of styles. Sean Porter has a record of 28 wins, 2 defeats, 1 draw. 17 of his 28 wins coming by way of stoppage. Danny Garcia has a record of 34 wins, 1 defeat, 0 draws. 20 of those 34 wins coming by way of stoppage. Danny Garcia and Sean Porter have quite a similar knockout ratio. Sean Porter has a 55% knockout ratio, whereas Danny Garcia has a 57% knockout ratio. Despite it being relatively close, I do feel Danny Garcia probably hits quite a bit harder. I feel that Danny Garcia's power in the past has probably been overrated, but I would say that he probably hits quite a bit harder than Sean Porter. That's just a personal observation um, from watching both fighters over the years. Might be wrong, who knows. Both guys are experienced, both guys have over 30 fights, both guys have fought quite good competition. Sean Porter has been in there with the likes of Keith Furman, Kel Brook, Devin Alexander, Paulie Malinaji, Adrian Broner and the likes, whereas Danny Garcia has been in there with Keith Furman, uh, Lamont Peterson, Lucas Matisse, Malinaji, etc, etc. You know, both guys have fought good competition, both guys have fought at a high level, and both guys are experienced, so can't really see neither one of these guys kind of freezing or or really shitting the bed, as they say. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Danny Garcia, he is listed as 5 foot 8 and a half with a 68 and a half inch reach, whereas Sean Porter is listed as 5 foot 7 with a 69 and a half inch reach. So Danny Garcia is an inch and a half taller, but Danny does have a uh, 1 inch reach disadvantage. So Danny Garcia is a bit taller, whereas Sean Porter has longer reach. How will that manifest in the ring? Who knows? But, um, you know, I feel I feel that uh, the, the reach advantage of Sean Porter, I'm not really sure, you know, given his style, it's going to be a massive advantage. One thing I will say, Sean Porter, as we know, he's an aggressive fighter, likes to come forward, likes to push his opponents back and, and kind of work on the inside. One thing Porter doesn't really get any credit for is jabbing his way in. He'll kind of jab from the outside and step behind it and get inside. And he does it really, really quickly. It's hard to time. It's not really um, telegraphed at all. You know, Sean Porter, he likes to kind of get low. He crouches. He's got quick feet. Um, Porter's really hard to read. You know, if you go back and watch the Kel Brook fight and the Keith Thurman fights, yes, I felt both guys beat him, but I think you should go back and watch those fights. Porter wasn't caught cleanly that many times and it will surprise you. Yes, he was caught clean sometimes coming in, given his style that's always going to happen. But it's not like he gets like, lit up like Brandon Rios or, or somebody like that, you know. He is quite hard to read at times, you know, given his kind of awkward herky-jerky style. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how, how Danny Garcia deals with that jab on the outside, given the, re given the reach disadvantage. Um... Not only that, Danny Garcia, he's quite textbook as far as I'm concerned. To me, Danny Garcia, he's good on the outside, he's got a good jab, he's got a good straight right hand behind it, and he's got a good left hook. So he is quite competent on the outside, and he may be able to outbox Sean Porter in stretches, um, but I feel Danny's best at mid-range. So when Sean Porter is kind of at mid-range or in the pocket, that's where you'd expect Danny Garcia to have some success, and if Sean does sit in the pocket too long, uh, Danny can definitely time him and land some good counter hooks, some good uppercuts, and some good body shots on the inside and, and uh, at mid range. Um, but Porter has got a knack of really smothering his opponents, but he'll he'll still be able to work himself. So he'll smother you, he'll stop you throwing punches, but he's mauling, he's 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 throwing clubbing shots, and he's still and he's still landing. How effective these shots are you know, is um, up for debate, but sometimes that catches the judge's eye when Sean Porter's neutralising your offence and he's there wailing on the inside. No matter what's getting through, you know, that's that's going to leave some sort of impression on the judges. And I think Porter does that quite well. You know, he's really good at neutralising fighters on the inside. 
and stopping them from working while he's working. You know, that's one of his best skills as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, I think Danny overall, obviously, to me, he is a better... He's a better technician overall. He's got better timing for the most part. He throws his shots in a more technically correct fashion. I think overall he just has better boxing ability. But Danny, to me, has slow feet. You know, if you're somebody like Brandon Rios who has slow feet, Danny can look good against you. He's going to tee off, he's going to he's going to land his jab, he's going to land the right hand behind it, and he's going to set that counter left hook up, as we saw against Brandon Rios. You know, he was teeing off on Brandon Rios at times um, because of Brandon Rios' feet were so slow. And by the way, despite that, despite Brandon Rios' feet being so slow, he was still getting on the inside at times and working on, on Danny Garcia and having some success, which was a bit worrying for me going into this fight. But if you're flat-footed and you've got slow feet and you and you stand in front of Danny Garcia, you are going to get lit up. Um, but Sean Porter's feet are exceptionally quick. I don't think anybody at welterweight, apart from Pacquiao, has quicker feet than Sean Porter. I really don't. You know, he's really, really quick on his feet. Not only that, he likes to get low, he likes to crouch, he does move his head. He's re he's a nightmare. And, you know, I don't think Danny is going to get that many opportunities to really stand on the outside and tee off or stand at mid-range in front of a flat-footed uh, flat Sean Porter. I don't think that's going to happen often. When it does, he needs to make it count and land big shots, but I don't think it's going to happen often. Sean Porter has bagfuls of energy, and when he gets on the inside on Danny Garcia, I think he's going to get the best of it. I think you're going to see Sean Porter will be the stronger man in there. We've seen Danny Garcia get worked on the inside by Lamont Peterson. We saw Maurizio Herrera completely outwork Danny Garcia on the inside, and Herrera while very skilled on the inside, isn't strong on the inside. You know, P Peterson is strong on the inside, and, and that gave Danny real issues. But even Herrera, who's not strong physically on the inside, he's like I said, he's skilled on the inside, but he's not strong. Even Herrera was giving Danny hell on the inside. So just imagine Sean Porter's strength when he gets in, gets in, in Danny Garcia's grill. What's going to happen? I think Danny's going to struggle with it, and he may struggle with the pace that is being set by Sean Porter. Um, I am definitely leaning towards Sean Porter in this one. Don't get me wrong, with a fighter like Danny Garcia, he can time you, he can hurt you, and he can knock you out. I do feel his power is slightly overrated, but I genuinely feel if he catches you right and he lands right on the button, he can definitely knock you out. So Sean Porter, he has to be aware of that, and Danny Garcia is always going to have a puncher's chance. But I just don't see Danny Garcia being good enough on the inside and overall being busy enough to beat Sean Porter. Having said that, another thing you've got to consider is the judging. If you're the PBC and you're Al Heyman, who would you rather win in this fight? If it's by any means close, who would you rather win? Chances are, you know, they're going to say Danny Garcia. He's more marketable to the Hispanic audience. Um, so I could see Sean Porter getting robbed. You know, we've seen it happen in Danny Garcia fights before. Like I said, the Herrera fight, a lot of people felt um, Lamont Peterson beat Danny Garcia. You know, every single close fight has gone in Danny Garcia's favour. And even clear losses like the Herrera fight also went in Danny Garcia's favour. So, listen, if it's close, I can't see Sean Porter getting this fight. I really can't. But um, I feel if the judging is neutral, I feel Sean Porter should have enough to win a decision here. What do you guys think? Peace.